I'd like to explain about taxation of cooperative societies in Kenya. This explanation is based on the provisions of Income Tax Act, CAP 470. A cooperative society in Kenya is a body corporate, just like any other corporation, but a special corporation based on how it is treated in terms of taxation. For purposes of taxation, cooperative societies are classified into two categories in Kenya. The first category are cooperative societies which are registered under the Companies Act, CAP 486. Such cooperative societies are subject to the provisions of Income Tax Act that applies to any other uh, company which is registered under CAP 486. Example of such corporate societies include the KCC, KPCU, KFA, among other companies. The second category, corporate societies which are registered under the Corporate Societies Act, CAP 490. They are referred to as designated cooperative societies which are further divided into three categories. The first category is primary designated cooperative societies whose membership are individuals. Secondary designated societies whose membership are other cooperative societies. And then we have savings and credit cooperative societies. This type of cooperative societies are considered to be primary cooperative societies, but they have a special feature which the, the other cooperative societies don't have because they deal with only savings and credit. That is what makes them unique and therefore being treated separately. Cooperative societies are subject to taxation in accordance with the Section 19 of Income Tax Act. The Section 19 of Income Tax Act has a distinction for other primary cooperative societies and the circle separately. Then we let us look at the taxation of designated cooperative societies. This is both primary and secondary designated cooperative societies. The determination of the adjusted business income tax of designated cooperative societies happens similar to that of any other business that we have talked about before. But the difference is that the bonuses and dividends that these cooperative societies distribute to their members are treated as allowable expenses and therefore deducted. Remember, dividends and bonuses in other corporations are considered to be distribution of profit, especially if they take place after the taxable profit has been generated. They are treated as appropriation of profits. But when you come to corporate societies, even though they are appropriation of profits, they are allowable expenses which are deducted from the taxable income of the cooperative society. However, for these bonuses and dividends to be deducted from the expense or from the incomes of cooperative societies, a number of factors are considered, which we're going to look at below. But first understand that the bonuses and dividends that are deducted from the incomes of cooperative society should not exceed the adjusted profit for that particular year of income. That is to mean these cooperative societies should not carry forward losses from any one particular year to the next or the following year. The conditions that are must be fulfilled for bonuses and dividends to be deductible include the following. They must have been approved by the Commissioner of Cooperative Development. They must have been actually paid out in terms of cash, checks, or dividend warrants and credited in the member's account. That is in a case cash is not paid or checked. They must be approved at the AGM by the members of the cooperative society and also must be approved 
by the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes, the CDT. Finally, where they have not been paid, maybe due to shortage of cash, an auditor must certify that when the cash is available, they will be paid out. These conditions must be fulfilled. The auditor's report must state that such dividends and bonuses will be paid. When this cooperative societies pay out dividend to the members, the dividends that they pay out are considered to be non-qualifying dividend income to the members that receive them. And they are for subject to withholding tax at the rate of 15%, which is not final. I would like to illustrate this with an example as follows. The following example illustrates the concept of taxation of cooperative societies in Kenya. It has incomes and expenses. Incomes of the entity include sale of milk and other products. These are commercial expenses of the entity and therefore chargeable to tax. Taxable. Dividends from quoted companies. It's not taxable because dividends from quoted companies, which are limited liability companies, are qualifying dividend income. Qualifying dividend incomes are subject to a final withholding tax at the rate of 5%, which is fine. Therefore, not taxable in this case. Expenses include the following. Donations to a registered charitable organization. This is allowable expense, which should be deducted. Income tax paid 2018. is not allowable because taxes and expenses related to payment of taxes are not allowable. Legal fees on bank overdraft. This is a, a, a finance cost and therefore allowable expense. But as written off are also allowable expenses. In, uh, loss on investment is not allowable because loss of, on investment is a capital loss. The investments are capital assets. Committee sitting allowances are allowable because they are commercial expenses of the business. Interest on overdraft, finance cost, also allowable. Stationary, allowable. Bonus and dividends are also allowable for these cooperative societies. For other organizations, the normal corporations, dividends and bonuses are considered to be appropriation of profits and therefore not allowable. But in this case, the bonuses and dividends are allowable. Lastly, surplus that has been reported by this particular entity. The requirement is that we determine the taxable income and the tax payable in the year of income. To answer this question, we can follow one of the two approaches. That is to begin with the incomes and deduct allowable expenses or adjust the reported profit for tax purposes, adjust the reported surplus for tax purposes. Let's start with the first approach, which is the direct approach, where we just determine the taxable income, subtract from them the allowable expenses. The later we shall follow the second approach, which adjusts the surplus to become the taxable income. To begin with, then we start by saying Mawega Dairy Cooperative Society. Statement of taxable profit. For the year 2019. 2021. For the year 2021. Right, so the, in this particular direct approach, the items of income that we have identified as taxable begins. We begin with them. In this case, it is sale of milk, sale of milk and other products. Uh, 
amounting to 21 million 600,000. We need to add, uh, no, there's none that we add because the other income is not taxable. Then we go direct to less allowable expenses, only allowable expenses, not all the expenses. The allowable expenses have been um, determined as follows. Donations to charity, donations to registered charity, Uh, that is 80,000. Uh, that is 80,000. Legal fees and bank overdraft. On bank overdraft. Uh, and that is 125,000. Bad debt return of bad debt return of uh, the amount is equal to one sixty thousand. Committee sitting allowance is the next one. Three hundred thousand interest on overdraft. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Stationary. A hundred thousand, and then we have bonus and dividends. Bonus and dividends are twenty million, and then we need to determine the total of all these expenses that we are subtracting. The total of this is equal to 20 million 965. 20 million 965 thousand. Now we need to determine, determine the difference between that and the income or subtract it from the incomes. And if we subtract from that from the incomes, then the taxable surplus therefore, Taxable surplus in this case equal to 635,000. 635,000. That is a taxable surplus. And that is when we are using the first approach. Remember, I said that there is a second approach that we can use in case we are determining the taxable profit for. Uh, the cooperative societies like this. In the second approach, we are adjusting the reported surplus to become the taxable surplus. In the first approach, we have reconstructed the statement from the beginning. In the second approach, we are not going to construct the statement from the beginning. Instead, we are going to start with the reported surplus and adjust it to become the taxable surplus. Therefore, we say, Mawega Dairy Cooperative Society. Statement of taxable income. For the year of income 2019. Sorry, the year should be 2021 not 
In this case, we start with the reported surplus according to the account. Remember the reason why we have to do the adjustment here is that the accounting standards which have been used to prepare the income statement has different provisions from the Income Tax Act. And due to that difference in the provisions, then we have to take care of the differences, the tax differences, and therefore adjust it to become the taxable income. That is the activity we are engaging in right now. So reported surplus, according to the account, or as per the financial statements prepared, of course, prepared by according to the accounting standards. That is 175,000. Add back these are liable expenses. Now you can see the items that we have starred. The items with the star are disallowable expenses. That is under the expenses category. We add them back. They include the income tax, income tax paid, 2018. The amount is uh, 800,000. and loss on sale of investment. Which is equal to 60,000. The total of this is 860,000. We add that, actually we add that 176, 175,000, which was reported. And if we add it to 175,000, we get uh, a total of one million and thirty-five thousand. One million and thirty-five thousand. And then you remember that there is a, a, an income that was added, but this income which was added is not taxable. That is the the uh, dividend from um, a quoted company, and dividend from quoted company I said is not taxable because such dividends are qualifying, therefore less non-taxable income added, non-taxable income added. In this case, the income that was added but not taxable is dividend from quoted company. And the dividend from quoted company is uh, 400,000. We deduct that amount. If you deduct 400,000 from that amount, then what, what you're going to get is um, 635,000. The figure is the same as the figure that we got in the first approach. In the first approach, we got 635,000. And even the second approach, Six at five thousand. So you can see that the figures are the same. It does not matter the approach you're using. So the easiest approach for you, you can be able to determine the taxable surplus for this particular organization. <laughs>